Today we're talking about load shedding. If, you, if you're a South African, you're battling load shedding right now. No matter what you're, in, no matter what you're doing, if you are one of these people who after COVID is now working from home, you, you're struggling to fit in all your hours that you have to put in to, to work during load shedding. If you've got children at school, school is so online at the moment, especially high school. My high school son, when I watch him doing homework, he never picks up a pen, it's all online. So he needs to stay connected to the grid, he needs the power on. If you've got a business running from home, or you've got a small business like, my, like myself, where you're not in a, in a big building where there's massive inverters and generators and so on, you're having to look after your own electricity. If you're in any of those categories, load shedding is really affecting your productivity. So my name is Neil Foster from Power in the Box, and today I want to discuss some of these issues, and, and then if you stay around till the end of the video, I've got some solutions in place. Today is just after Easter weekend, and as you heard in the news uh, this weekend, uh, I'll insert a clip now of the helicopter shots showing you the, the power lines in Pretoria East that, were, that, were, that fell over. So there was a minor storm, nothing major, but it was enough to, to knock these power lines over because their structures had been stolen. You know, we, we, we're quite familiar with cable theft, but I must admit I was shocked to see that they're actually stealing the pylons themselves. They're actually weakening the structures by stealing, elect, uh, by cutting off sections of the pylons. And of course they weakened and then all you need is a bit of a storm and over it goes and suddenly you've got half a city without electricity. So one of the solutions that we have to find for load shedding has got to do with poverty. And on, on the one side you've got the social economic uh, effects of poverty that are right throughout this country. but. You know, from a, from a crime prevention point of view, more attention needs to be put on on the scrap metal dealers. Somebody is buying this copper. Somebody is buying the metal, and those are the people we can target. We're facing theft of the cables and other pylons. Who knows how many other pylons have been damaged and are waiting to fall over? And every time one of them falls over, or some of them fall over, it causes damage, and we have extended power outages. Then you get the allegations of corruption. And in South Africa, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you throw at a problem, you just wonder how much of it gets siphoned off in corruption. But that, I'm also not going to deal with that right now, but it's, it's a factor. It's a, it's a real factor. It affects whatever the plans are. We've got a new uh, Minister of Electricity. I don't know why we need one of those, but clearly we do. And he's been appointed to solve this problem. And I've been listening to one or two of the things he's had to say, and basically he's saying he needs money. He needs money to fix the problem and we've got to throw money at Eskom and my concern is you throw money at Eskom, whose pockets does it go into? But nevertheless he's saying we need more money and we need to keep the old non-green coal-fired power stations up and running for longer. And then you have the, the issue of capacity. Um, is a, you know, we know our grid is right at capacity so at, this, at, the, smallest, at the smallest problem You've got one power station going out, suddenly the whole grid is affected, we have to, we, we don't, we're not producing enough power. Typically what happens with the power station, you have scheduled maintenance and at certain periods you would, dec you would actually switch certain, certain sections off to maintain them and to replace things, but now we don't get to do that. When you do that, you can actually go to tender, you can get the things at the right price, you can plan it all, have everybody there, all the consultants and specialists you need to be on site to do the job and it's done with minimal, minimal hassle. However, when you don't do that, when you don't do schedule maintenance and you have a breakdown, now suddenly it's an emergency. The right parts aren't there, you've got to import parts and you have a whole power station sitting, functioning at, at much reduced capacity because of a small, a relatively small problem, but the part isn't available. And then of course there isn't time to go to tender to get it done properly, so you get ripped off when you buy the parts. That's just the fact of, of life with engineering. If you're not, not able to do scheduled maintenance, you're actually going to hiding to nowhere. So we've got all of these problems. We have capacity problems, we have corruption problems, and we have poverty. Load shedding is not going to end this month. It's not going to end next month. In fact, today, if, if you look at this screenshot of my load shedding app, it shows you that we are level five today, and uh, at it's midday at the moment, so we, we've still got another three times today that we're going to be shut off. And then tomorrow it looks like another three times. And that's, and heaven help us if we go up to Schedule 8 or more. Because according to my app, if we're on Schedule 8, we get no electricity tomorrow. That's it. According to my app, 
we have no, we, it means lights off all day. Because eight seems to be the maximum, and yet we have this new minister, <coughs> Minister Ramakopo, I think his, if I hope I said his name correctly, he, he in an interview a while ago, he said we need to prepare for schedule for stage N. And I read another article this morning where they're having to redo the schedule, so we go all the way up to 16. We're being shed at level 5 today, and we've been off four times for four two-hour sessions. And the, the minister himself is saying get ready for, shed, for level 10, whatever that may be. It looks to me like lights out. So what do we do about it? We're not in it. Look, if you're an affluent person living in a house, by now you've probably got solar panels on your roof and you're fine. But what if you're living in a rented house? What if you're renting property? What if you're living in a townhouse complex? What if you're living in a cluster and you're renting it? You have no option to go solar. You just can't go solar because it's not your property, not your house. You can't go installing things. And in a townhouse complex, I, I really, really feel for the townhouse dwellers and there are thousands of them in, in Johannesburg just alone. I have another company called Target Properties where we deal in the townhouse market. And I just feel for all of our tenants because when the lights go off, that's it. You can't put a generator on. You can't go solar. What do you do? You just sit there with your lights off. Battery power. Got some candles. Candles and batteries. But we've got a solution that will actually take you, take the townhouse dweller for a start and people who have got small, uh, small uh, offices, so, you know, as you're running just a few PCs, something like what I've got here, um, you can see at my desk here, I've got, I'm simulating one now, but I've got a, a laptop and a desktop running and a light and my Wi-Fi, and I'm all running it off the power in the box, which you see down there, which is essentially a hybrid inverter. And, what this, this inverter is designed to do is it's designed to take uh, a combination, it's called hybrid because it combines solar, if you want it, and the grid power, and it takes that, the energy from both solar and the grid, and it stores it in the battery, which lives in the box, and then when you're, when you're being load shared, it converts that um, battery power back into 220 volts. We have a solution which doesn't entail you having to spend 300,000 Rand to get your whole uh, house up and running on solar and completely off the grid. We're not going completely off the grid here. I'm taking, I'm saying if, you're a stu if you've got a student in the house and you need him, to, you need to keep him or her online and operating. If you need to keep a small business operating, you need to keep yourself connected to the internet, print one or two documents, <coughs> some basic light. This is not for your stoves. This is just to keep a, a small office going. And I've actually got a power meter here to show you just how much it is because people don't really get a feel for it. So I'm just going to pick up the camera here and, and take you through it. This is a, effectively a small office with the lights and the Wi-Fi and two PCs. It's running at about 120 watts. Let's call it 120 watts. And outside what I have is a solar panel. I'll show it to you now. But right now I'm connected to the grid. I'm simulating a, a townhouse, a, an office being run from a townhouse and you literally take the solar panel and you put it on your veranda. So this, this solar panel is, it's very light. It's probably about two, three kilograms. This is a 200 watt solar panel. And I know that we are running only 120 watts here. So what happens right now is that the solar panel is charging the battery and it is supplying uh, power to the load. And there we go, it's gone off again. That, that means the battery is full. So the, this, the, the solar panel will be switched on and off all the time because it's producing more power than we're using. Because we're only using 120 watts, but this is a 200 watt panel. So effectively, this, uh, if, you st if, you are, if you have an extended outage, like you live in Pretoria and your pylons are down, or you, um, or you in stage 10, you can have your single panel like this. If you live in a townhouse, you can actually put this on your veranda. If like it's just happened in Pretoria where you lose the power for a couple of days at a time, you can use the sun. The solar panel is at the moment running this whole office and only using half of its capacity to do so. The other half is using to charge the battery. So when the sun goes down, you've still got another four hours to run the office. All you need is the power in the box, with a, with a single solar panel of 200 watts and you go, and you up and running.
And of course, if you're concerned about your fridge and you've got a fairly small fridge, this could easily handle your fridge as well. This is a solution that is, is open to every townhouse dweller out there and everybody who's got a student or, a, or running a small office from home.